All right, we're carrying on with the big story of God, and there's two things to remember about the big story. One, it's big, it's massive, it's bigger than me, and it's bigger than you. And so when I arrive at the end of the day, consumed with these thoughts about how everything's going and not able to spot the presence of God sometimes, I have to remind myself it's bigger than just me. And the second thing is, it's a story that hasn't finished yet. It's still being written, and you and I are a key part in that. But this isn't it, which is good news, because this is sometimes quite overwhelming, hey? Anyway, we're down in Egypt. We've been there for a couple of hundred years after Joseph and his clan all moved down there, and the Pharaoh, who really liked Joseph, put him in charge of the whole country. But they are history now, and instead, in their place... Do you get flamingos in Egypt? I don't know. We'll sort that out in a minute. In their place is this other Pharaoh, the mean bad guy, who's full of fear. He doesn't like other people that don't look like him or sound like him or come from the same place as him. And he finds them a threat to himself. And so he tries to keep them down and oppress them. In fact, he said that all the newborn babies born to the Israelite people should be killed because he doesn't want any more of them. Now, of course, we met last time as well, two faithful, creative, kind, courageous, loving midwives who looked after the Israelite women and their babies and made sure that their babies weren't killed. One of those women who gave birth to a beautiful baby boy also had a, another daughter called Miriam. Miriam and her mom start to nurse this baby until after a couple of weeks they say, look, we can't hide him anymore. Pharaoh and his soldiers will find him soon. The best thing we can do is to put him in a basket, cover that basket in tar so it's waterproof, and then put it onto the River Nile, which is what they do. And Miriam, this young girl, watches to see what will happen. Well, guess what happens? The basket bobs down the River Nile until it lands in the palace gardens of the daughter of the Pharaoh. No! Surely the whole family's nuts, right? Wrong. Pharaoh's daughter takes this baby out of the basket and she, as you and I would be, is like, oh my goodness, look at this beautiful baby. I love this baby. How cute. Miriam, brave girl that she is, steps up and says, hey, excuse me, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, princess lady. Uh, I think I know the mother of that baby. Why don't I take the baby back to the mother and the mother can nurse and feed milk to the baby until the baby grows up a little bit and then we can bring the baby back to you and you can adopt the baby. How about that? Pharaoh's daughter says, you're on. Great plan. Love it. Go and nurse the baby. In fact, let me pay you to do it. Let me pay the mother to bring up this baby until it's a child that I can bring up as my own. So this is what happens to the baby Moses, sent back to his mum, looked after under palace guard until a time when he's adopted into Pharaoh's family. Just when you think it's all going horribly wrong, just when you think the promise of the blessing and love of God is going to hit an insurmountable object and run into a brick wall and not be able to get any further, just when you think it's all being overwhelmed by the darkness, the light finds a way to shine. And God, it turns out, is always writing his grace into the story that we're a part of.